Hello and welcome. In this video I'll be doing a shore based cold start in the Rasbam AV8B Harrier 2. Now to get things started we're going to right click on the battery, switch that on, and then we're going to do a lights, cautionaries and a, um, audibles check with this switch here. So hold, press and hold right click on the mouse. As you can see the caution panel is lit up as are the USC lights uh, master caution master warning and audibles plus gear lights stow light and combat water light and HUD master modes everything works fine let go of the right button click to clear click three times this side to shut the audibles up completely next we're going to switch on the digital engine control system which is here and we're going to open the fuel line by putting the shut off valve down. Next we're going to sort out our external lights. Um, I prefer my navigation or position lights bright. Any collisions on. We're on the ground so taxi light on. And then to switch those on proper we need to put that into norm. Uh, next we're going to switch on our left and right fuel panels into the normal position. Now we're going to do a built-in test for the engine display panel here. Click this button. I'm going to look for over temperature, H2O 15 second. Make sure the nozzle um, changes position and the counters move to make sure that their um, built-in test is running properly. After that we come down to the fuel quantity panel. We're going to um, increase the bingo fuel to over 4,000 pounds. There's a reason for that. Um, we want the bingo light to uh, illuminate on the bit test. So uh, once I get uh, flick this up into bit or built in test, um, the, the uh, values will change here. We'll have 1400 plus or minus uh, 100 pounds on the left, 2400 plus or minus 100 pounds on the right, and in the totalizer at the top, we'll have 3800 plus or minus 200 pounds. Um, and then we'll have left, right um, fuel warnings, uh, master caution, and like I say, the bingo light, and then there'll be a flashing load light down here in the caution panel. So click that up, there we go, master caution on, left and right fuel, um, warnings on, bingo fuel on, and load on. So we can bring that back down to either total or internal, whatever your preference is. Um, next we can close the canopy, uh, as we're going to get the auxiliary power unit started now. Once that's closed, we can come down to the APU, right click, and that will come online, and we'll get an APU light down here. After that, um, we are going to do a DEX check. Um, so we're going to switch the DEX off the digital engine uh, computer uh, uh, control system. Sorry, switch that off. Make sure we get a JPTL EFC light. Uh, cautions. Switch it back on. Come down to the electronic fuel uh, controls down here. Uh, make sure that we get a warning in position one. Uh, go back to position two, and we get the same again. So that's all good to go. Now that all we've we've done all our testing for all the internal systems, um, we can now fire up the engine. So we're going to come down to the engine uh, switch here and uh, flick that on. Now when I switch it on we are going to be looking at this part of the engine display panel here. When that gets to around about 3% 3, um, 3 we are going to advance the throttle out of the shut off um, so that the fuel can flow properly and then we're going to wait for the um, RPM to settle between 28.4 uh, and 
So we'll switch on the engine switch now. So clear the caution. And wait for three percent. Take it out of the shut off. As you can see, we advance slightly. Once it gets to nine percent, jet pipe temperature should go up, and it has. Okay, and we now have engine start. You just got to wait for the uh, RPM to settle. Okay, so it's settled at 28.5, so we needed a value between 28.4 and 29%, so that is all good. And the jet pipe temperature is 395 degrees, uh, we, anything below 545 is good. So, uh, we can now go on and switch on our multi-purpose colour displays, our HUD. Um, on the brightness for a UFC, switch on both comms 1 and 2, ok that's good to go. Now we are going to align the um, INS, to do that we need to go into the um, electronic horizontal situational display, so we click here, click on data, come down to AC. Now what we're going to need to do now is put in our coordinates of where we're actually currently parked. To do that we need to bring up the kneeboard. Now you can either do that by doing sh uh, right shift and kilo or you can just press and hold the kilo key. And as you can see we've got a latitude and longitude there. We're going to enter that into the UFC. So we want north, 4, 2, 1, 0, 1, 9 enter and then we want east 0, 042 enter uh, we're going to do our magnetic variation as well so come up to the ODU press on MVA uh, now you can see it's 6.2 easting so east 6.2 enter so magnetic variation has also been included. So we can let go of the kilo key, that gets rid of the knee board. We come down to the INS switch here, and we're going to uh, switch it into ground, so GND. So click that twice, clear the caution. We'll have a count, uh, a count up to about a minute and then it will then start to count down uh, for the quality till it gets below, uh, I think it gets to about 0 0.7 or 0 0.5 and then we can finally switch into nav uh, but the, the whole um, INS warm up usually takes around about 3 minutes so while we're waiting for that we can switch on the dual mode tracker which are the sensors in the nose uh, the forward looking infrared, switch that on um, and we can also do a, a jet pipe temperature limiter test as well uh, we can switch this off and we can see an increase in RPM and jet pipe temperature ok and then we can switch that back on so we know that the, the limiter is actually working we're also going to do the same for the water so um, it won't use any of the water in the tank but we will um, we should witness a raise in the RPM and JPT as well so we're going to flick that to takeoff and as you can see the RPM is climbing JPT is climbing switch that back to off and then we are going to switch into landing and again we can witness a raise in RPM and jet pipe temperature. Uh, we can now switch that off and we know that the H2O switches are working properly. Now uh, we're going to use a scratch pad here. I like to turn off the 
um, low altitude warning off um, just simply because it I know when I'm low so I don't need um, a computer voice to shout at me to tell me that I'm low so I turn that off switch on the TACAN uh, so on and I know that we have a tanker flying around 69X um, and press enter so we can now we now have the tack can on also I I'm not sure about you but I prefer to be able to see what um what's going on in my um, electronic um, horizontal situational display um, so I like to turn the map off now to do that you want the third button on the left come across and you want the second button down that will turn the map off and then we'll just flick that back off and as you can see the quality has come down uh, we are at 0 0.7 it's ok and as I say it took around about three minutes to um, get the inertial navigation system up and running so now we can flick over to nav and then click data and now INS is all sorted if we bring the scale out uh, at the moment it's 13 nautical miles, 5 nautical miles, switch that to auto. Um, the tanker that I um, tuned into has now showed up on the display. Uh, so we know that the TACAN is working um, and uh, the INS is all good. So uh, we've checked the water, we've checked um, the jet pipe temperature limiter, dual mode tracker is on, um, INS is on. Uh, next thing we need to do is just to make sure that the um, standby instruments down here match what's on here. So uh, first thing we're going to do is zero out the barometric altimeter. So we've got that zero, zero there, and we've got our barometric um, units there. Well, we did have um, feet uh, feet per minute zero. A DME to the TACAN is 58.1, it's obviously flying towards us. Um, our speed in knots is zero. Uh, it's showing us eight there, I believe that's purely because the wind's blowing against the PO probe. Uh, angle of attack zero, angle of attack is zero. Uh, that symbol there is the uh, angle of attack symbol. We have a VV. Uh, vertical velocity indicate VVI uh, again that's what that is there uh, the uh, the uh, horizontal uh, barometric uh, the horizontal um, wow brain fart moment the backup hor uh, artificial horizon Oh my god, what happened there? there? Yeah, so the backup artificial horizon matches, uh, says we're leveled there. Um, and turns to indicator, the white ball is in the middle. All is good. Okay, so HUD matches standby instruments. Um, so next we're going to switch on our flap system. So right click, switch that on. Uh, we're going to flick it up into cruise, make sure that it says 5 degrees back into auto, back into stall, make sure the stall light comes on and it's at 25 degrees and there should be a droop light down here which there is. Uh, we're going to switch that back into cruise to uh, as when we taxi uh, cruise is what we need to be in. Uh, next we're going to um, check our refueling probe. Uh, the switch is here um, but I've got mine bound to my uh, HOTAS so flick that on Okay, and flick it off. Oh, another thing to f I forgot to check, make sure that the ready light comes on up here to make sure that it's ready to take in fuel. Close that again. Okay, and we want to um, switch off oh, radios. Uh, so we want uh, transmit, receive, and guard. So flick that up to TR plus G. Um, and that is pretty much all of the um, 
starter procedure from the manual anyway and we're going to choose forward looking infrared for that MPCD uh, for when we're ready to taxi so um, that's it for the um, start up uh, what I will do now is I will taxi down to the end of the runway um, and um, get us ready for takeoff that way um, my next videos can purely concentrate on taking off so um, you're going to want to uh, bind uh, the nose wheel steering um, to your um, your stick uh, to do that just bear me one second uh, we do have a nose wheel steering switch but we're going to need this extra one uh, for when we're on the aircraft carrier because that turns the nose wheel st steering into high gain and you need the high gain to maneuver around on an aircraft carrier or um, amphibious assault ship so if we put NWS and we want AG target under designate NWS FOV toggle uh, and just bind that to a stick okay <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is we are we'll flick that down oh, that's already down into nose wheel steering so we have nose wheel steering there and when I push the button we get uh, the high gain next to it there so that is now um, we now know that, that the high gain is working um, so nose wheel steering is all good um, and then the other checks that we need to do before we can um, taxi basically uh, we want to check that our VSTOL HUD mode is selected nozzles are set to 10 degrees of which uh, they are so put them back to 10 and flaps set to cruise yes uh, brakes check we'll do that in a minute once I get moving nose wheel steering we've just checked so uh, we can make our way to the active now we need to activate the parking brake so that we can move so right click there clear the caution and we also need to get the ground crew to um, take the chocks away so go to the comms menu ground crew Wheel chocks removed. Remove the wheel chocks. Copy. Wheel chocks are now removed. Okay, so we should now be able to move. Which we are. Okay, so nose wheel steering, good. Brakes, check. Okay, so now we're going to uh, make sure that the high gain is also working. So hold the high gain. And as you can see the maneuverability is very good take the high gain off and now we're back to the limiter so we're going to taxi, uh, taxi down to the end of the runway and then we will do our pre-positioning uh, checks before takeoff and that will be the end of the video so let's cruise down Right, okay, so we are at the end of the taxiway. We can now do our pre positioning checks. Uh, usually we do a C waiver check um, C for clock, W for weapons programmed, but we don't count, we're not carrying any at the moment. Uh, a for angle rate bombing system or ARBS to bore site. Forward looking infrared set as required. As you can see, we've already got the forward looking infrared up on our right MPCD. Uh, I for IFF as desired. Um, IFF is down here. Uh, not set any of that because we're not going into combat. I a call switch as desired. I'm not carrying any weapons again. Uh, TACAN set as required. We set that for our tanker. V for video recording system. So you've got all your video recording uh, bits and pieces there. Uh, e for ECM. So if you're carrying the um, 
the one uh, was it the one six four four pod jammer pod then uh, obviously you'd set your um, ECM there and then rad out to set so we can get, come down from barometer to radar altimeter okay so uh, last bits uh, coming out of the sea waiver checks last checks before we go onto the runway uh, canopy closed check sea armed check flight and standby instruments are all aligned which they are check anti-skid light on so we come out of nose wheel steering and on now we'll be only using the high gain button for nose wheel steering uh, of which it just does normal nose wheel steering so now we've got anti-skid check um, then we need to do uh, INS um, make sure the INS is either in NAV or IFA in flight align it's in NAV so that's good um, altitude switch uh, of which I've switched off we can change the uh, the warning um, altitude it was at 500 feet um, but you can change that to whatever you want so when you come below a certain altitude it will it will give you the warning um, as I switch that off that doesn't really count in this one so check um, the out uh, the out, out altitude barometer switch the radar altimeter uh, barometer switch check and approach light we can now switch that to full on okay uh, and with that you're ready to go out onto the runway and do your takeoff um, so yeah that has been a shore based uh, cold start in the RASBAM AV8B Harrier 2 um, I hope that's made sense and um, has helped out anybody who needs it um, not not very basic to be honest uh, it's come straight out of the manual and it's took me a while to get used to um, I've left out some of the shall we say less um, important um, bits and pieces like nozzle positions and duct pressure and things like that could have included it but um, not really any point so yeah cold start shore base cold start um, there you go um, as always take care and I will see you in the next one